Love with Pat's Two Cents, here with a message where God tells his people, fear not. And I add, especially in these last days when we have no idea what's brewing. We have a lot of suspicions, don't we? Some of us are worried. Some of us are planning on moving out of the country. Some of us don't know what to do with our money or some of you with your investments. But let me tell you, if you're in God and God is in you, you have no need to fear. Now check this out. I know it sounds crazy, but I want you to hear what God is showing me in this scripture. We're going to read from Deuteronomy chapter 31. One verse. Verse 6. I want you to hear this. I want your hearts to be lifted up. Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Sounds kind of basic, doesn't it? You're waiting for thunder and lightning to come out of heaven and the angels to sing. But you can stand on his word. God is not a man that he should lie. So he does not lie. He doesn't give you a promise and then say, Psych! Now, he doesn't play that with us. So I want to share with you some dreams and some experiences I have had in the past where God let me know there was a central theme in every single one of them. These were prophetic dreams. One of them looked like a major tragedy was getting ready to take place, major disaster, horrific. And I see a wall of water. And I'm looking at this wall of water and I'm wondering why it's not moving quickly, but it's inching along. It's busy, there's a lot of movement in the water, but it's inching along. It looks like ocean water. And I see a little girl, now I'm inside. I see a little girl outside playing with her doll. So I run outside and grab her and pick her up, pull her inside the uh, building. She was playing in the parking lot. So I know we were in some type of a commercial setting. I pull her inside of the building and I'm inside with the rest of the people and we are safe. We felt no water, we f there was no damage, there was nothing, no, no flooding, nothing. Now whatever happened outside, I don't know because God woke me up. I had another dream. And I know I have shared this before. And in this dream, I was standing outside of a church building in the ramp section. And I hear this rushing. And I look over my left shoulder. And all this water is whipping and rushing like a river rapids. And I'm like, oh my goodness, it was a sudden flood came out of nowhere. And the water is splashing, I mean, splashing as high as it could touch the roof of some of the houses and buildings. And I'm standing there like, where do I go? And the water gets past me before I could do anything. And it rushes over my head. And I'm looking at the water go over my head. And I mean, it was a big body of water. Not one drop got on me. Not one drop. That was mind-blowing. And I stayed bone dry. Now, I know this sounds bizarre, but it doesn't end there. The next thing I know, I am heading towards the front of the building. And as I turn the corner, I go inside the building, and all these people, church people, God's people, standing inside together, 
and I hear this crackling noise. So I look outside and I, I look up the street and it's getting dark. It's getting darker and darker. I mean, within a matter of seconds, it's night. And the crackling noise is louder and louder. And I see over different heights of the road, the road kind of went like that. And on the upper heights, it reflected the moonlight. And it looked like ice actually growing onto the surface of the street. It was the weirdest thing. It looked like ice. So I'm thinking, oh, how weird. Then, a man's voice says, everybody get inside, stay inside, lock the doors, and don't go out until this passes over. So we get inside, and it turns out it was a glass wall, so we all get to see what's happening. God has a way of showing his God's people what's happening. Um, but anyway... I'm looking at these, at this thing moving down the road, and guess what? It was not ice. It was locust. Not locust. It was like a beetle. It was a bunch of black beetles with shiny backs, and that's where the reflection was coming from, and it gave the illusion of ice coming over. I'm wearing my husband's cuddly warm jacket. But the beetles are coming down the street. And now they're passing in front of us. Tons of them all over covered the whole street. But they're moving. And they're moving. They're not trying to get in our building. They're just going down the street. Now, when they're done, this is the next thing that happened. One of the brothers of the church opens the front door, gets a broom, goes outside, and starts sweeping sweeping up the debris left behind by the bugs by the beetles now check it out that showed me that the church was going to be part of the aftermath the cleanup crew the crew that 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 kind of removed the the danger particles and the the Whatever, I'm not even trying to explain it right now. But let me just tell you the rest of the story. Okay, so what ends up happening is all of a sudden, everybody is getting everything together. And next thing you know, phone calls start coming in. Now this is where it got a little sad to me. It turned a corner in the dream, and I was thinking, wow, I don't know if I like this one. But what ended up happening was phone calls started flooding. And when the phone calls started flooding, people were telling us, people are wounded, people are hurt, we need help. There are people who are trapped. I mean, it was like devastation everywhere. We were safe. We weren't aware of it. Our building was totally intact. Everything around us looked intact, except for the debris from the, from the beetle bugs. And these calls start coming in. We need volunteers. Check it out. Now the sun's coming up, because we've been there trying to clean up all the debris and clear the street out. And now we get calls, emergency. We need emergency crews. People are hurt. People are wounded. Can you please send volunteers? I mean, we, we were like, what happened? It was so bizarre. But the way the calls were coming in, these disasters were happening all around us. Now, there's a scripture in Psalms 91 that says, A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. So we end up witnessing and watching what's going on, but we don't have to be overtaken by the tragedy and the devastation of it all. 
We don't have to be hurt. Isaiah 54, it says, no weapon formed against us will prosper. So it's like, take your best shot, baby, but if God's got me protected, you can't hurt me. We have to trust in God even if we feel like turning tail and running. Even if we are hitting the panic button, we have to stop, get our bearings and say, God, help me know what you want me to do during these disasters. Help me know what to do to help my fellow man. You have us here for a reason. God bless you.